Hi everybody. I'm going to talk about how I'm going to operate my Oak Hill layout. Again, it's a switching layout just based on the town of Oak Hill, which you see is in the center of the diagram that I made here. There'll be a lot of talking in this video. I apologize up front. Not going to be any action. You're just going to have to listen to me talk. Uh, so I'll try to keep it as brief to the point as possible. So I'm modeling around the year 1980. Uh, and the Portsmouth subdivision is where Oak Hill is at, the B&O Portsmouth subdivision. And of course, that was part of the Chessie system at that time. So the Portsmouth subdivision originally ran from Hamden, Ohio, on the B&O Ohio division, to Portsmouth, uh, Ohio. Now, in the 1960s, they abandoned the section south of South Webster. Um, and actually, the CNO. Uh, build a connection just north of their Limeville Bridge uh, to connect to the old B&O track. So any industries that they still served in the Portsmouth, Sciotaville area, they could still serve. Uh, but there wasn't much traffic down there at that time. Uh, so when I'm modeling in 1980, the line actually ended in South Webster. Now, over the years, the operating patterns changed based on how many, how much traffic there was on the line. Typically, a crew was called out of Wellston. Uh, there was a yard just south of Wellston called Meadow Run, uh, but the crews were based out of Wellston. So if there wasn't a lot of traffic at the time, through trains would drop off cars in Hamden, Ohio. The Wellston, or the Portsmouth uh, job, would go to Hamden in the morning when they called, drop off the car previous day's cars and pick up the cars they needed, and then head south, switching the industries as they went, and then come back to Wellston at the end of the day. If there was a lot of traffic at the time, then a turn would operate out of Chillicothe to Wellston to, to pick up and drop off cars, and that way the Wellston job would not have, or the Portsmouth job would not have to run up to Hampton uh, to do anything. There were several industries in Wellston that had uh, some service, and there's, I don't know if there's anything in Wellston now. There is a, uh, like a dog food plant between Wellston and Jackson. Uh, but at the time, Wellston and Jackson both had some industries. Jackson actually had a couple of steel mills at one time, but by the time I'm modeling, they were long gone. Now the DTNI comes into the picture because Jackson was the southern terminus of the main line of the DTNI. So it came in and DTNI, that's where they had their shops and everything at. They did have a branch line that ran from Jackson to Ironton, Ohio, down the river, but the first 30 or so miles were over B&O trackage rights. So they ran through Oak Hill. There's several little towns in here I've left off. So there's some industries in here in towns that I left off, but uh, they ran through Oak Hill to a place called Bloom Junction, where they went back on their own rails and went to uh, Ironton while the B&O kept going south. Again, by the time I'm modeling, they terminated in South Webster. They did keep an operator in Oak Hill and also they had a place called Black Fork Junction down here. I don't know if they had one at Bloom Junction or not, but they had semaphores because they did have, you know, they had to control the trains to make sure, that, you know, there was no interference, no collisions or anything. Um, but again, I'm modeling just the town of Oak Hill. The time I'm modeling, there's very little business south of Oak Hill. Just two or three industries down there, they did not get served every day. The Wellston job was basically Monday through Friday at this time, and, you know, they came in on the morning, you know, did everything they could, and went off in the evening. There were no other trains on the line. There's just two trains, the, uh, the B&O train and the DT&I train. Again, they did not always run down to South Webster or south of Oak Hill because the industries down there didn't need switched every day. Uh, there were a few... Almost all the traffic uh, on the line at this time was clay products. You know, brick factories, uh, refractories, 
things like that. Uh, there was a charcoal plant up north of Oak Hill, which I'm not modeling, uh, but almost everything else was was a clay related products that's because this area southern ohio is you know there's a lot of clay there still a lot of clay industry there uh, not as many brick factories because the brick factories the fire clay was dependent on steel mills and there's not as much steel manufacturing in the united states now as it used to be so most of this has died out uh, so how i'm going to run my layout I'm going to have the north end staging yard is going to represent Wellston. The south end staging yard is going to represent anything south of Oak Hill. So it's not necessarily South Webster. Anything south of Oak Hill is going to be represented by the south staging yard. So typically, the train might leave Wellston with 30 cars. The time we got to Jackson, it'd drop off a bunch of them. The time we, so the time we got to Oak Hill, it might have 10 cars left. <clears throat> when railroads run turns, where a train is going to come, go out and come back the same way, they don't haul all those cars for nothing. They leave them parked in sidings and pick them up on the way back. So that is why the south end staging yard doesn't need to be as big as the north end staging yard. I might pull into Oak Hill with you know, 10 cars, 12 cars, something like that. When I leave Oak Hill... I'm only taking the cars with me to serve these industries because I'm going to come back through Oak Hill and pick those cars up. Another thing I want to do is when I pull into Oak Hill, I'm only going to switch the trailing point uh, switches, which in this case on the way going south is Cedar Heights Clay. I will leave the cars for the scrapyard and the brick plant in Oak Hill as well as the cars that I don't, you know, I just switched out of Cedar Heights Clay, and I will take the cars I need down to the South Staging Yard. In the South Staging Yard, I'm going to use that like a fiddle yard. So the previous day's cars are going to be sitting in a box. You know, I've already shown you, like, I have a file cabinet here, I have a box, and there are probably three or four cars in it. Those were delivered the previous day. When I get to the staging yard, I'll pick up the engine, put it on the other end of the train, put the caboose on the south end of the train, and I'll switch out the cars. I'll put the cars from the box into the train, and I'll put the cars on the train into the box to be picked up tomorrow. Then I will head back north into Oak Hill. I will switch the brick factory, I'll switch the scrap yard, and I'll take all my cars and head back into North Staging. So that's why North End Staging has to be bigger than South End Staging, because real railroads don't haul cars for nothing. They'll leave them parked, pick them back up on the way by. I do have one regret, which I didn't think about. I just kept thinking of the B&O. Well, the B&O doesn't need very much staging. Well, the dt &I train is just a run-through train. So this being shorter, limits the length of my dt and i train so i would have liked to have made this another you know 12 inches but i'm not going to go back and change it now the dt and i train is just for show that's all it is um it's just going to run through oak hill maybe stop at the station to get you know train orders or something and it's going to terminate in the south staging yard it's not going to run back through because real life the time they had to run to Ironton and do all the switching and come back, it came back in the evening. The OKL agency was only open 8 to 5. Uh, so, you know, the DT&I trains t typically came back through Oak Hill after that time. Now, again, I'm taking this off a 1984 B&O timetable. So, the B&O typically got to Oak Hill maybe around 12.30. And also, I've got some station orders from Oak Hill, from the agency, that, so it shows what time the, the train got into town, what time it left town. Um, and so I can pretty much guess, you know, that's just sort of an average time. It depends on how much work they had in Wellston and Jackson. dt and I was supposed to be, according to the timetable, in Jackson at 11.40 a.m. It was usually a little bit before that. I probably must have left Jackson a little bit earlier. Uh, a little bit before that. 
Now I'm going to sort of flip these a little bit because I I want to have some meats. I want to have some, yeah, the B and O interfered the switching by the DT and I train. Um, so I'm going to have the B and O <clears throat> train run first, and while it is switching in Oak Hill, I'll run the DT and I train through, and the B and O train has to get out of the way basically, and that's just. You know, maybe some days if I'm just switching by myself, I just won't even run the DT and I train. You know, it's just more of a show thing. So I can take photo ops and things like that, uh, showing the meets because uh, there's a lot of cool pictures of the DT and I trains going through Oak Hill. So, but a lot of times I don't have to run the DT and I train at all. Uh, the B and O trains are typically just called ex they were extras, so they do the called extra 65, 62, whatever the engine number was. Uh, the DT and I train actually on the B&O timetable was 101 was going south, 108 was coming back north. Um, so the, again, the way I'm going to operate my layout, B&O is going to go from north staging to Oak Hill, switch the southbound or the trailing point switches, go to south staging. I'm going to fiddle with the cars. Then I'll run back through Oak Hill northbound, do those, you know, switching for those industries and terminate north staging. DT and I, when I run it, it's gonna go from north staging uh, through Oak Hill southbound, there's no work, nothing to do, it's just a run through train, and it's gonna terminate in south staging. Again, that's just for show. Actually, I was researching some of the DT and I stuff because my original reason I got interested in Oak Hill was because I was gonna model the DT and I, Ironton Branch. Uh, so I went back through my DT and I files. I was trying to figure out what time they went through Oak Hill, and I found some emails from 2003 about Oak Hill that I'd contact people that I'd forgotten all about. And one of them was actually Jim Hediger from uh, Model Railroader, who you know he modeled the what he called the Ohio Southern, which was his version of the DT and I. And I was asking him questions about Ironton. So uh, I've been interested in this area for a long time, but my focus has shifted from the DT and I to the B and O. Uh, who knows my next switching layout might be DT and I again might be an Ironton. I don't know. Uh, just gotta get this one done first. So I hope that answers your questions how I'm going to operate this. Um, I like to try to stay as close to prototype as possible. That's just me. Uh, I, I enjoy the research. Uh, you know, I've got magazine articles, emails, uh, Facebook's a great source. You know, the, the, there's a B&O Ohio Division Facebook page. Where there's some, not only fans, but there's some of the old, you know, train crews members of it. So you can ask them questions and they'll tell you all kinds of good stuff. Uh, there's a DT&I page uh, that you can ask, do the same thing. There's an Oak Hill Historical Society has a Facebook page. So I've got a tremendous amount of information. From, uh, Facebook pages. So this Sunday I'm going to take my road trip. I'm going to go to Chillicothe which is three hours from here. I'm going to take measurements on the yard office because I'm going to try to scratch build that for my Chillicothe layout. Uh, then I'm going to drive about an hour south to Oak Hill and take a bunch of photos there. I've got a whole list of stuff I measurements I want to take and photos I want to take. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to drive, uh, it's about, a little bit less than an hour from Oak Hill to Portsmouth. And since I've been interested in Oak Hill, I've gotten interested in uh, the brick industry. And I've taken up the hobby of brick collecting. <laughs> so, uh, there's old brick industry, a lot of the bricks, they used to stamp the company's name on them. And they're a lot of, uh, so kind of cool. You just go out and you look for them. You don't, uh, don't cost any money other than gas and time. It's, uh, some of them are pretty cool. So uh, I'll show you some pictures of some of the bricks. That I've gotten some time. Uh, then after that it's about a two-hour drive back to Chalakothi so I'll spend about seven hours in the car Sunday uh, time permitting and uh, hopefully I'll get some good bricks get some good pictures so I can uh, continue with my modeling and and I can show you some of those uh, uh, the results of the road trip in another video. If I get tired of hearing me talk so I'm going to close it here Again, questions and comments are always welcome Everybody, stay safe.